Diversification can be complex and it can be risky for companies. So why do they do it? There are three primary areas of incentives for CEOs and their companies to diversify. The first of those is external pressures. Next is value creating incentive. And then the third is managerial incentive. Of all of these incentives to diversify, some of them are beneficial for the company. Some of them can actually be neutral or even value destroying for companies. So let's talk about each of these. First is external incentives to diversify, including antitrust legislation and tax laws. You're probably familiar with this cartoon showing the influence of powerful companies over the US Senate in the late 19th century. Because some companies and industries had so much market power that made tons of money for the businesses and hurt consumers, the Sherman Antitrust Act was passed in 1890 to improve business competition in favor of consumers. In order to prevent companies from getting too powerful, the law allows the federal government to stop activities such as mergers and acquisitions that would create too much market power for companies. Although the company gets bigger, it doesn't create market power in a specific industry. Enforcement of the Sherman Antitrust Act and other similar laws has varied over time. During the 1960s and 70s, vertical and horizontal mergers were discouraged because they could increase market power, so companies pursued unrelated acquisitions in order to grow. This enforcement was later relaxed. Some more acquisitions were allowed that would build market power. But then, since around 2000, that is tightening up again. Companies that want to grow through mergers and acquisitions sometimes have to find unrelated companies to acquire if that is how they choose to grow. Tax laws are another external pressure that can encourage diversification for companies. When successful companies pay dividends to investors, the investors have to pay taxes on those gains before they can invest in other things. But when personal tax rates are high, it actually ends up costing the investors more money. It can actually save on taxes and allow the companies to do the investing, which benefits both the company because it gets bigger and the investors because their investments are allowed to grow without being taxed. The 1986 Tax Reform Act reduced individual tax rates from 50% to 28%. This change alone meant that individual investors could keep more of the money that they receive from dividends. So dividends become better than companies making acquisitions and diversifying. These laws change over time but it is important for companies to understand what is best for investors and to either invest the extra funds or send those funds to investors through dividends. This is a decision that can be related to the tax laws. Next, we have internal incentives to diversify. Companies with the right level of diversification can increase their performance and make more money for their investors. Single and dominant businesses can be effective. They can be profitable. But companies that engage in related linked or related constrained levels of diversification can actually build on their capabilities and become even more profitable or more effective and have higher performance. But that is a benefit that can go away if the company starts to pursue too much diversification that is unrelated, that doesn't really build on the capabilities they already have. It can end up making the company less efficient and less effective. Unrelated diversification may be no better than no diversification at all. Some diversification can be beneficial to the company and help it get stronger, especially when it builds on operational or corporate related capabilities. Diversification can then create more value for the company and its investors and other stakeholders when the company is able to achieve synergy. Synergy is created when two combined companies produce more value together than when they are separate. Sometimes diversification can create this synergy. Diversification can also happen in response to performance, especially poor performance. Companies that are performing poorly are, or should be, looking for new ways to build value and get back on track. This can happen either because of performance that is already poor or because of concerns that performance may become poor or worsen in the future. Sometimes competition can force companies to look for new products and services to create new value. A pharmaceutical company with a profitable drug should look for new products because the patent on drugs will eventually expire. The benefit provided because of those patented medications will go away. The company will need 
a new product line or something new that it can do. Past company success does not guarantee future success. Diversification is one method of building new capabilities and future profitability for the company. For successful diversification, firms should have both appropriate incentives to diversify and also the resources necessary to do so. Diversification can help a company to get stronger, but it can also harm a company if pursued for the wrong reasons or if it is carried out poorly. And this brings us to managerial motives to diversify. Managers often have motives to diversify even when it's not good for the company. Diversified companies are generally larger, and larger companies tend to pay CEOs more. This creates an incentive to grow and diversify that benefits the CEO regardless of whether it's good for the company. CEOs also gain personal reputation and greater social status with other executives when they are in charge of larger companies. Another potential benefit to CEOs is that their job status is often related to company performance. CEOs can be fired when the company struggles. Diversified companies tend to spread out risk. So even if part of the company struggles, the diversified company looks okay overall because of other product lines that may be performing better, and the CEO is less likely to be blamed even if their leadership is not effective. This helps to protect the CEO's job and income. Once again, this is good for the CEO, but not for the company. When CEOs pursue diversification for their own benefit and not for the benefit of the company, this can destroy value. It can hurt the investors. Effective corporate governance, such as oversight from the board of directors, should help with this, but it does not always work as it should. So what benefits can you identify from diversified product or service lines in your company? Does it make your company stronger? Why or why not? Thanks for joining today. I hope you enjoy the video. Have a great day. Take care.